What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week five of the GBA season four. And this week, we're going up against the New Orleans Pelippers and their coach, Pokemon, aka John. I guess he normally says it backwards. He says John, aka Pokemon. Um, I'm really excited for this battle, but I'm also really nervous again. I mean, the the nature of this team is that I, the nature of the team that I have built is that I'm scared of everything. Uh, I'm learning this now. I'm learning a bit by bit, guys. Uh, I'm always scared of hidden powers, and this match is no exception. He has a few Pokemon that very solidly check certain Pokemon, and I feel like, oh, that's okay because I have this safe switch in, and then I don't because of hidden powers and four times weaknesses. Um, I'm going to go into that a little bit later, but I built a team that I hope is going to function well against his. It's making a few bold predictions on my part about the six Pokemon I think he's bringing. But uh, in the end, in the end, you gotta make some, you gotta make some choices, and that's what I've done here today. So let me go over my team that I'm bringing this week. We're gonna start off with Proto. First thing you guys are gonna notice is that uh, no rain this week. There's a pretty specific reason for that. The big number one is that it doesn't help me survive any notable fire moves from a lot of the Pokemon that I fear the most. And while it might help me survive a couple of hidden power fires on Scizor, it, other than that, provides me with not a whole lot else. Politoed does nothing to his team. It provides a lot of ample setup opportunities for John. I think that might be John now. Uh, yeah, the chat is telling me to <laughs> have this battle. A lot of people in the GBA chat are waiting for this, so uh, I think they're going to watch it either live or just right after it happens so that they don't <laughs> advise us to do any particular moves or anything. That would be bad. So. Uh, Digressions, guys. Let's get back to this. I didn't feel like I needed the rain. I felt like it would be a slight benefit to, have, to waterfall damage. Waterfall being a good move in a lot of cases, but actually doesn't do a whole lot to his team in a lot of circumstances. Whereas Earthquake is a great move for me. It's going to be really solid for me, uh, with the exception of whether if he brings... You know, he has a flying type Pokemon, so you have to be a little nervous about that. He has a Levitator and Oopsie, but I think there are ways around that, so I opted to not bring the rain today. However, I did still bring Ultron, I did still bring one of my Pokemon that's weak to fire. Two of my Pokemon that are weak to fire, but Skulliver doesn't really count. Skullipede dies to everything, so... <laughs> and it's still true thus far that he has not successfully gotten a Baton Pass off this season. No, that's not true. He did get a Baton Pass off against... Dan and St. Louis Rampardos, he got a plus one speed pass over to Moltres or Scizor or something. Um, I just cannot stay focused today. I don't know. Um, I'm very tired. This team feels a little bit rushed to me. I got a few notable EV spreads in there at the last minute, um, but I almost just brought very standard sets. I've been really busy this week, guys. I got called in on my day off to go to work, and that's not an excuse. I won't use that as an excuse. If I lose, that's, you know, good game John. It's because he prepared well and battled well, and I'm very much predicting that that's going to be exactly what happens because, you know, it just seems... That's just something... What's happening here? Is my screen just showing me the way to a buried treasure? Is that what's happening right now? Is that X marks the spot, guys. And there's going to be, like, a little treasure chest here. It kind of looks like a treasure chest, I think. Mm, not really... Not really a treasure chest at all. I gotta have the back of it. There we go. That's the back of the treasure chest. There's little gold coins in there. Do not judge my treasure chest, guys. I know you're trying to judge it. I'm gonna ask you kindly not to do that. This is gonna be like an island, I think. It's gonna be an island on this treasure chest. This is gonna be water. And there's gonna be at least one shark here. And there's gonna be like a little thing there. Not from there. Eyebrows are gonna be off of its body. Yes, sharks have eyebrows. Now, you know what? Maybe I'll just leave this here while I continue talking about my team. Um, <laughs> uh, that's for you, baby nips. This one, uh, this spread that I have for Scizor is to maintain. I really like bulky banded Scizor in this format. There's not really any Pokemon that are super notable that I can outspeed on his team. Uh, it gives me enough speed investment to. Oh yeah, the speed investment was put there because if in the off chance that I choose the baton pass from Scolliver over to Proto, um, this speed stat will allow me to outspeed a 252 max speed Raikou um, by one point. So that's the point of that, uh, Proto being one of my potential receivers of a baton pass. Not my ideal one because he's choice banded and it sucks to get locked into something that you're just going to have to switch out of. 
Uh, Scullivar's only going to get one shot, and maybe not even that if, uh, if he gets phased out. He has a phaser on his team, I think. Um, Roar could be on Sylveon. I'm sure there's a Whirlwind on Staraptor, potentially. I really don't see that happening. Let's go, let's take an opportunity here to go over the six Pokemon that I think he's bringing, and the 11 Pokemon that he has. He has a Mega Venusaur, a Sylveon, a Raikou, Staraptor, Empoleon, Spiritomb, Uxi, Kyurembi, Crocodile, Entei, and Hariyama. And I immediately ruled out a few of these Pokemon because they don't match up well against my team. One of those is Spiritomb, uh, another one is Hariyama, and then I started ruling out other Pokemon that I just didn't see as very likely to bring. Staraptor could be brought. He could. However, I don't think Staraptor is coming because the very nature of Staraptor is a very hyper-offensive Pokemon, and that doesn't suit John in his matchup against me. His matchup against me has got to be uh, big switches and kill me with hidden power or certain stab. He's going to try and wall me with Mega Venusaur, and he's got a pretty good chance of doing so. But part of the reason I picked the six Pokemon that I picked is to really solidify this Venusaur is going down. It has to go down. It has to die. And I'll get into that in just a second. The six Pokemon I think he's going to bring are Venusaur. Let's write this out. I think Venusaur is coming. I think Sylveon is coming. Um, these obviously are pretty safe bets being that uh, Sylveon's... No, Mega Venusaur's come to every game. Sylveon is a great Pokemon. It's a good answer to my Bunny Soul, good safe switch. Raikou is pretty much his MVP at the moment. I'm pretty sure Raikou is coming. Raikou does a number to a lot of the main scary members of my team, including Gyarados. Uh, if he packs Hidden Power Grass, he is going to murder Swampert. I'm going to have to be really careful with that. I'm really hoping he's choiced. I'm really hoping he's choiced. I really, really am. So, um, there's that. Uh, we're going to have... Staraptor's not coming. Empoleon might be coming. Here's my... I think Empoleon, but there's a potential he'll bring Uxie over Empoleon. So I'm going to say Empoleon or Uxie. This is going to take me a while to write. Sorry, guys. Uxie. Also, the handwriting, though. Next level. Uh, so Empoleon's coming. Spiritomb's definitely not coming. He's never brought Spiritomb. It doesn't match up well against my team. It's not coming. Uxie, like I said, potentially. Kyurem B, definitely. And, guys, remember a couple of weeks ago, the I, I created for myself the theme of the day. The theme of the day is, of that, of that game several weeks ago, I don't even remember which game, was I don't mess with you uh, when there's a threat on the field. Kill it with fire, dear word. Kyurem B is a problem for me. Um, he can be one of the strongest, hardest hitting physical sweepers in the entire tier. His speed of 95 outspeeds most of my prominent threats with the exception of Swampert, Not in the Rain, and my Choice Scarfers. I, like, he's, he's a terrifying threat, and he could sweep my entire team, so every time it comes on the field, it's likely he'll get a kill, and my response needs to be, kill it, Dear word, kill it right now. So that's going to be my response to that. Kyra B is big threat. Venusaur, big threat. Here's a funny thing. Uh, of the last three Pokemon, we know he's not bringing Hariyama. It's either between Crocodile and Entei for his sixth spot. And Entei would probably be his better choice, but I think he won't bring it because he fears the rain. That's my thought process. I think he thinks, oh, it's just going to weaken him, and then he's just a non-stab stone edge and stuff like that. But... The burn is terrifying to members of my team, any of them. Uh, no one wants to get burned. Sacred Fire decimates a good number of my team with really high damage. Just two hit KO and almost everything if it's banded. He's a base speed of 100, outspeeds just about everybody. Uh, my Premier Sweepers have a hard time taking, taking him out and are very scared of him. Gyarados almost gets one shot by Stone Edge. Uh, I can one hit KO in return with Waterfall, but that's still, you know, almost getting one shot super dangerous. Uh, Sacred Fire one hit KO Scissor, obviously. Scissor can't do much outside of hitting him with a superpower, and I'm just to be forced to switch out. Um, HP Grass, if he packs it, could do about almost 50% to Swampert, and other than that, Swampert's my safest switch in for it, and that would be my best. So, Entei's a very dangerous... I really think they want me to hurry up. I'm taking a long time with this. Sorry, guys! Entei is a very good Pokemon. I don't think he's going to bring it. I think he's bringing Crocodile, and looking at his uh, previous... Crocodile. 
Re looking at his previous matches, I think he's gonna go Scarfed with it, because once again, it's a very fast Pokemon. He can ensure that he outspeeds any of my Scarfers with it. And, you know, it's just, it's, he'll be a problem if he does. Dark Stab, I don't have any Dark Stab resist. I think people have started to notice that, which is funny. People try and think like, oh, I could just bring in this Dark Pokemon, just shoot off Dark type attacks. And while that's true, I'm still not scared of Dark. There's, you know, there's no B-Sharp in this league. Oh, the only really, really, truly scary Dark type Pokemon, yes, Crookedile's a little scary, um, and Crawdont and Hydreigon. Crookedile's not scary enough. Crawdon is scary for reasons outside of his dark type stab because it's not priority and he's very slow, so you can take advantage of it that way. And Hydreigon, yeah, he's scary, but he's also scary for coverage reasons, not just because of dark. So I'm really not that scared of dark. I don't think it's a big deal that I'm not resisting it in anything. But guys, this is the six I think he's bringing, so this is the team I've opted to uh, try and counter that. Let's go back into it. Sorry that this one's taking a while. I'm trying to speak quickly to get through it really, really fast. So this is, uh, this is my proto. Proto's been doing a lot of work for me in every single match. You might notice I'm not packing Defog here. If he gets up rock, so be it. I have to press the speed up button this entire game. This is going to be a hyper offensive game for me, guys. It has to be. I just don't match up well enough to give him even a second to breathe. So, uh, bullet punch, U-turn for a little momentum gain. Uh, it's going to be scary to pull off U-turns because almost anything on his team could feasibly carry hidden power. Uh, even his physical sweepers have decent special attack and could really do a number for me um, with that. The only thing I could survive a hidden power fire from, I think, is like Uxie, Spiritomb, and Empoleon. But Empoleon would go for Scald trying to get the burn on me anyway, and Spiritomb and Uxie probably aren't coming. So that's my Scizor. Uh, we're going to skip GLaDOS and we're going to move on to Scolliver, the Scolliopede. Scallopede has just enough speed EVs to outspeed a max speed Uxie or Kyurem B. Uh, that's not super significant. When I originally made this set, it was because I was worried that Uxie would have some weird taunt thing going on, but actually, Uxie doesn't learn taunt, so uh, I really don't know why I did that. I have the weakness policy here. I could change it to Focus Sash, but I'm not going to because uh, one of his potential leads, I've seen him lead with Venusaur a lot to try and get the Mega off early. If that is what ends up happening, um, I can survive a Hidden Power Fire with this HP investment. I can also survive a Psy Shock from an Uxie, again, if it comes, which is a very potential lead option for him if he does bring it. I can survive all those things with this amount of HP, just barely, but I can survive it and I get a Weakness Policy off in either of those circumstances, and if I Baton pass that the next turn, then that would be beautiful for me. Again, still really thinking Scolliver is going to have a hard time getting this off. This is my last ditch attempt because this needs to be a Hyper Offense match. I'm bringing a, a potential sweeper, setter, upper here in Scolliver. This is going to be it, guys. This is my last chance. Uh, Scolliver, this is it, bro. If you don't do it this round, you are done for me. You're dead to me. Um, we're going to move on here. He's got a relatively standard set for passing. He's got an x for uh, just safety stab uh, at plus two. It'll almost take out Uxie. Again, uh, the only reason I'm really calculating this against Uxie is that he's a potential lead for him. Mega Venusaur is another potential lead. Empoleon's another potential lead. Um, any Scarfer that can um, Volt Switch or U-Turn is a potential lead. So in this circumstance, Staraptor or Raikou. Um, all of these cir circumstances, though, uh, this is, I still think, the best set that I have to run for him. 244, this is the max amount of attack I could get while still maintaining the speed and HP I needed in order to survive and outspeed key threats. This is my Scolliver. Good luck, good luck, Scallopede. Let's see if you can get another uh, another pass off. We're having uh, Mega Swampert coming, not in the rain. Part of the reason there is that I'm running a bulky variant. I think I can survive attacks from Pokemon that don't have HP grass. I think, I fear a lot of things will have it, but... I match up pretty well against a lot of the bulky Pokemon in his team. It's a relatively safe switch for me in a lot of circumstances. It's a good switch opportunity for me into Raikou. I really do predict Raikou is going to be choice if anything. I am very scared of it being choice uh, specs because if it is, HP Grass will one hit KO me. If it's not, HP Grass won't one hit KO me, but then, you know, then he has the potential to switch. If I switch it on him, he does one move and then hits me with an HP Grass next, I'll die. So. Still scary, but I'm running a bulky variant. I have just enough speed that if I get, um, how did I calc this? 92 speed, I think, when I'm Mega Evolved. Uh, when I get 
Baton pass plus two speed at speeds. Yeah, there you go. I'm pretty sure this is the same, the same EV set I was hoping. To, yeah, I'll be 92 speed after the speed up, which is the same speed Proto has, which means I outspeed a non-scarfed Raikou Timid 252. So that's the speed EVs that I got. Uh, 240 is the highest HP set I can get while still maintaining an, e an odd number for more switch ins and minimal damage on stealth rocks. Max HP and the dump points went into special defense because he's got a lot of special attackers and because HP grass is a special attack. Fox! Guys, this is my MVP of my team at the moment. He's got the most kills. <laughs> People don't prepare for this guy, and I don't know why. I don't know why people still sleep on Fox. Like, you'd think people people look at my team and immediately go, Oh, well, he's got a Stealth Rock weakness and not very many ways to get rid of it. Moltres is not an issue because he'll die to Stealth Rocks. Well, he'll die to Stealth Rocks after switching in two times plus an attack. But until then, my Fox is going to run Choice Scarf with Fire Blast, Hurricane, Will-O-Wisp on U-Turn. I'm considering switching this to Air Slash. No, I'm not. I'm going to stick with it the way it is. I'm going to go Fire Blast, Hurricane, Will-O-Wisp, and U-Turn. Hurricane almost one-hit KOs Mega Venusaur again. Theme of the day, guys. Kill it with fire. If it's coming in and it's a dangerous threat to me, don't mess around. I got to kill things immediately. Um, <clears throat> I considered a lot of Fox's coverage moves. You know, I have uh, the, he's a Psychic Stab option. Uh, Moltres also can learn uh, a, a hidden power if it's relevant, but he doesn't really have any four times weaknesses. Uh, I could learn, you know, Roar or Defog on him, but there's no point. I could go Substitute, but I'm a choice set, so who cares? I go Toxic, but I have Will-O-Wisp, so, like, oh, I have Will-O-Wisp, so. I'm running Will-O-Wisp because there's a lot of people who I think might switch in on Fox that want to get burned. Um, a fast Willow could be potentially life-saving for me against, say, a potential Kairu, Kairu and B-Sweep. It, um, in general, I just think it's the best third move option for me. Fire Blast and Hurricane uh, are good stabs, and there's not a single Pokemon on his team that resists both. There are Pokemon that resist one or the other, and I'll have to play around that uh, and predict accordingly. U-Turn is just, a fast U-Turn could potentially be really useful for me, so... That is Fox. We got Bunny Sword just because he's so clutch. I want some bulk on my team, and I think I can get some bulk and power off this guy. A very standard set here, guys. He's running Assault Vest, Sap Sipper, so that he's a safe switch into Mega Venusaur. Safe switch into Mega Venusaur. Running Draco Meteor, Sludge Bomb, Ice Beam, and Earthquake. Uh, the Draco Meteor because um, with a hyper offensive team like this and so many choicers, there's going to be a lot of like hit and run moves here. Bunny Sword's not going to be staying in against something just popping off Dragon Pulses. Uh, I don't need the phasing power of Bunny Sword, so I don't need a Dragon Tail on him. Sludge Bomb is there to help deal with Sylveon. Ice Beam is there to help deal with any other potential. Po it hits a lot of his Pokemon super effectively that aren't covered by the other moves. And Earthquake is there exclusively for Raikou, uh, who is his MVP. The final Pokemon is my pretty much my pride and joy set i'm really hoping oh god i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry john i'm really almost done i promise uh my last set is glados here glados is running waterfall bounce earthquake and dragon dance with a power herb and uh this i think is my big set here guys this has got to be the thing that catches him off guard bounce is my way of dealing with mega venusaur i have a lot of mega venusaur checks here but i think mega venusaur will switch into glados because he thinks he can take anything i throw his way if he sees the bounce coming, he has a safe switch into Raikou. One thing he doesn't have, however, is an immediate prediction that I have a bounce coming his way on the first turn that I use it. So, really, you know, it might not pay off, and it also doesn't one-hit KO him, despite it being a stabbed high-power bounce, you know, like, flying move. But, you know what, I gotta... It, it does hit him really hard. And GLaDOS here, because he's not locked into anything with choice, is actually my primary receiver of baton passes from Scallopede. If Scallopede can get a plus two, plus two over to this GLaDOS, it's game over, because I'll definitely get a kill with that power herb. At plus two speed, nothing's outspeeding me. I've made sure of that with my speed EVs. A choice scarfed and or Raikou, the fastest Pokemon on his team, will not outspeed me after plus two speed. At plus two speed, plus two attack, everything on his team is one hit KO'd. With the exception of Uxie, who is potentially one hit KO. 
but not guaranteed. Uh, max attack adamant for the exact reason I need as much power as possible. This is the exact speed of EVs I need, no more, no less, and the rest went into HP to make me as bulky as possible. Uh, Moxie, because there is a potential if I do succeed in getting some of these passes off that he will be able to do a good number to his team. So it, you know, it's an option for me, and I don't see GLaDOS switching in too much. Um, the type of things that come in on GLaDOS, I don't have super safe switches in, with the exception of Raikou, I could switch into Bunny Sword. Uh, you know, all these games that I'm playing in my head right now, but that's what led me to deciding Moxie. So there you have it, guys. There's your Week 5 San Francisco Giantes. Uh, leaving a few Pokemon on the bench that I kind of wanted to bring. I really wanted to bring Ditto for this match as another potential answer to Mega Venusaur and to help me scout a few key Pokemon on his team, namely Raikou, to see whether or not he's got his hidden power. He's going to have hidden power. I'm not sure which one yet, though. Didn't want to bring Scolliver, but I think I need the pass options in this game. I'm probably going to lead with him this match. Normally, I don't lead with him. I try and bring him in the mid-game, but... Uh, I think most people against me, their priorities get stuff locked up, and I'm going to have him have a nice early matchup with it. So, there you go, guys. That's week five. The battle is going to start for me in a couple of minutes. It'll start for you guys tomorrow. As always, my name is Gym Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.